Einstein's idle daydreams will profoundly change the way the universe is understood. In 1905, in what's been called his miracle year, he publishes in his spare time four visionary papers, the first of which answers the age-old question, what is light? The photoelectric effect. This paper, written by this total unknown, showed that light comes as a particle called the photon. We use that in television. We use that in lasers. In another paper, the 26-year-old Einstein posits something we now take for granted, the existence of atoms. People didn't believe in atoms in those days, but they proved that atoms can actually make small little dust particles move in a liquid. And he calculated the size of atoms. These papers would have been a remarkable career for any physicist, but Einstein is far from finished. He writes yet another paper with the famous equation E equals mc squared. At the simplest level, this means energy can become matter, and matter can become energy. The tiniest speck of matter holds potentially huge amounts of energy. Unleashing it requires a nuclear reaction, the sort going on constantly in the night sky. Ever since people began to look up in the heavens, they would say, what makes the stars shine? But it took Albert Einstein to answer the question. Mass, M, turns into E, energy. That is the engine that lights up the stars. Today, E equals mc squared is Einstein's most famous equation. But another theory he publishes this same year is more important and more controversial, the special theory of relativity. When Einstein was a teenager, he enjoyed imagining what it would be like to ride a beam of light. Now, he returns to this daydream, and it changes his life. In the spring of 1905, Einstein was riding on a bus, and he looked back at the famous clock tower that dominates Bern, Switzerland. And then he imagined, what happens if that bus were racing near the speed of light? In his imagination, Einstein looks back at the clock tower, and what he sees is astonishing. As he reaches the speed of light, the hands of the clock appear frozen in time. Einstein would later write, a storm broke in my mind. All of a sudden, everything, everything kept gushing forward. Einstein knows that back at the clock tower, time is passing normally. But on Einstein's light speed bus, as he reaches the speed of light, the light from the clock can no longer catch up to him. The faster he races through space, the slower he moves through time. This insight sparks the birth of Einstein's special theory of relativity, which says that space and time are deeply connected. In fact, they are one and the same, a flexible fabric called space-time. On Einstein's imaginary journey, if his speed varies at all, his theory, his notion of how objects behave in time and space, falls apart. His scientific mind wants it to apply to all cases. Einstein knows that for his theory to work, it has to account for everything in the universe. And that includes the pervasive and invisible force that holds everything together. Gravity. Gravity is everywhere. Gravity holds us to the floor. Gravity holds the sun together, the solar system together. Where was gravity in special relativity? Einstein wants to expand his special theory of relativity into a general theory of relativity, a theory that will explain not just time, but also gravity. He realizes he will be fighting more than two centuries of scientific thought and his hero, Sir Isaac Newton. It's 1907 and the 28-year-old Albert Einstein is still a patent office bureaucrat. It has been two years since he published his special theory of relativity, and the ambitious Einstein decides to advance an even more radical interpretation of the universe, a general theory of relativity. Doing this will require him to take on his scientific hero, Sir Isaac Newton. In Einstein's time, Isaac Newton was God. Newton was the founder of modern science. This is the actual first edition of Newton's Principia Mathematica of 1687. 
this priceless artifact is the very, very famous book which became the foundation of universal physics for centuries until Einstein upset the apple cart. It has been almost 250 years since the apple fell from the legendary tree on Isaac Newton's estate, giving Newton the inspiration to formulate his law of gravity. Newton said that if an object falls, it's because there's a mysterious force called gravity pulling it down. But you know, Isaac Newton himself was not satisfied by that. Objects move because they're pushed. Not pulled, objects move because they're pushed. So what is pushing this? Newton didn't know. So Newton simply threw his hands up and said, I don't know. So I'm gonna invent something called gravitational pull. And Einstein said, no, this theory can't be right. He was prepared to simply go, I really want to solve this problem. I want to really understand the whole universe. Max Planck said to him, you can work on gravity if you want to, but there are two problems. You're not going to be successful. The problem is too hard. And if you do, no one will believe you. It's an extremely difficult task. It's not clear where to begin or how to go about doing it at all. Ultimately, the thing that gives him that clue turns out to be his old faithful way of reasoning, the thought experiment. So it's what you and I would call daydreaming, but he gets to call them thought experiments because he's Einstein. He's in his office at the patent office, looking out at the window, and he imagined a man working on a roof and he begins to wonder what would happen if one of those men were to fall off the roof. And then he had the happiest thought of his life, the inspiration of the ages. He had a vision. The man will not actually be feeling his own weight. He would be weightless. And then he imagined, if you're in an elevator and somebody cuts the cord, what happens to you? You fall. But the elevator falls at the same rate you do, so you are weightless inside the elevator. So then Einstein got it. It's as though gravity's been switched off. What's really going on? There is no such thing as gravitational pull. The Earth has curved the space around me, and space is pushing me into this chair. Space itself can be curved. Crazy sound. <laughs> Space is adjustable. It's actually malleable. Space and time are malleable. It's this flexible thing that can be twisted. You bring an object into space and it distorts the space around it. Why does the Earth go around the sun? Most people would say, well, the sun's gravity is yanking the Earth toward the sun in a circle. Wrong. The Earth is going around the sun because the sun has warped the space around the Earth, and space is pushing, pushing the Earth toward the sun. He had a new theory of gravity, a new theory of the universe.